Ability. The wind isn't really an issue, but it's the very dark conditions, of course, racing local time at six o'clock. I know there's bright lights, but you're not quite getting the crisp and clear sight picture through your sights onto the target. Well, before we get into the third leg, quick prediction. How many golds is Gusner going to win at the World Championships? Oh, you would expect it uh, in the really, it depends. If she, she, she's unable to control herself, and as a biathlete, you have to be able to control yourself. Coming into the range there, she couldn't. She just came in at maximum pace. She wasn't able to change her thinking. Are you going to give me an answer? For, for me, that lets her down big time. I think she might get uh, a gold in the relay and the chance of one for the gold. You, just, it, you have to be reliable. You have to, in biathlon, you have to be able to take charge of your emotions, your feelings, and how you push into the range especially. And the bigger the occasion, the harder it is to do. So the third leg runners, uh, well, Poland are there wearing bib six, uh, Monica Hunish uh, on course for them at the moment. Team 16 of Bulgaria who have now been lapped. So they're two kilometers behind the race leaders and Bulgaria have had three penalty loops to do. That's been their downfall with a total of 13 missed uh, targets. They're not at the back of the field. Korea and China in 17th and 18th at the moment. It's a shame about the Chinese. Uh, a decade ago, they were right up there with a chance of winning relays. It's amazing how the Chinese, the form and... Whoa! You don't want to fall. Yeah, you don't want to lose your concentration. That's uh, exactly what happened there from uh, Honish. That's a shame. That's not the perfect way to... And she just... Honish had just uh, opened up a gap of 16 seconds. It was 10 when she was handed over to. So all that gain now being lost. So Germany have fallen, France have fallen, Poland have fallen so far. I guess we're going to have a few more as this race goes on. Certainly the conditions aren't getting any easier. I was just about to say nice skiing from Fanny Horn of Norway who rounds that right-hander. And for France, Sophie Boy looking very solid indeed. Nice technique from her. Well, the rain has eased a little, but it's still pretty miserable here in Oberhof. Quite a bit of tension there, Patrick, through uh, third leg for Germany, Hildebrand, Francesca's uh, legs. Certainly a, a little fear, and look at this fall. It was just the skis coming in uh, underneath her, just letting, not keeping the weight equally on both. Yeah, Bulgaria's Stoyanova uh, quite wisely just slowing the pace. But when the ruts have been cut so deep in this soft snow, Mike, uh, if you're not focused, you can easily have one ski driven straight into the other and uh, you go down before you know it. So let's have a look at the times. Now just 7.8 seconds between the front two. Germany's still in second position. Uh, who out of this group of uh, six athletes is skiing too hard to give themselves a chance of hitting targets. Well, they have to keep the, the pressure on. They have to try and stay in their place in the pack or move forward, ideally. Big crowds expected here tomorrow night for the men's 4 by 7.5. And then the week involving a sprint and a pursuit. Mark Kirchner looking on there, former, well, many times world champion and World Cup winner. Men's coach, but they bring all the coaches out to help. It's a busy time for the coaches for both teams because they share the workload. I can't think, Patrick, where it's ever been this close coming in for the third leg first shoot. Certainly not with this number of athletes. Uh, often we've had the leading three together, but uh, this season that hasn't been the case. Just looking at the results of the first round of the relay, Norway uh, won that first round, 111.45. We had Ukraine, 112.15, so uh, a full 30 seconds behind. Russia were 15 seconds behind them, so they were fairly well spread out. 
uh, and only four teams finishing in the first minute and then the margins uh, got huge Poland 220 behind in sixth place so this is considerably tighter than there the world championships well Germany were 30 seconds clear of France and France were uh, another 10 seconds clear of Norway and then after that the margins grew significantly so yes this is a very very tight relay Poland are the su surprise uh, ingredients in the leading uh, group of six and doing pretty well. Honish recovering from that fall. She'll help hand over to Novakowska. Well, I should think all the uh, all the restaurateurs and bar owners are hoping for a German victory because it does have a significant <laughs> influence over how much is consumed in the couple of hours after the race. And how loud the town is later. There's Hojnes just uh, blowing through her rear sight, so Snow did get into the sights on the fall. Ukraine in lane two with Elena Podrushna, who's been very good of late. Germany with Franziska Hildebrand. Three out of three. The crowd staying nice and quiet for Hildebrand at the moment. Four out of four, throws number five wide, and Ukraine are going to take a lead. Norway slow to get the first round down, but so far they've hit three out of three, four out of four. Good shooting from Horn, and she gets the fifth one. She will join the Ukrainians at the front of the field. Germany finally get it down. Poland only one mistake. Russia, one mistake so far. They need it, and they need it quickly. France likewise. Down it goes, making sure and uh, a steady shoot from Shamilova and the French with Sophie Boye on course keeps them in contention so for once Mike no major developments it's incredible we're still going to have six teams within what 30 seconds and that is tight at this stage in the mo in the women's relay Czech Republic there's a shot missed well, in Italy have performed so well so far in these conditions Mike where there's, the wind has died away. Uh, all, the, all the changes seem to be happening on the standing shoot. When you get a windy day with difficult visibility, then most of the changes take take, take place in the in the prone shoot. They do because you're, you're so much. You have to be so much more accurate with just the golf ball size part of the target scoring as a hit. I thought this was a, a, an amazing performance from Hojnic to have had such a good lead to fall, to lose it. It puts you under a huge amount of pressure. Well, there are the top six, 28.3 seconds, the margin, the... Uh, well, next time we see that, we'll explain the score, I'm sure you understand it, but uh, the, the black figures on the right indicating how many targets have been missed and how many penalty loops have been incurred. If you're going to fall, make it dramatic. That, of course, is the Chinese, and Yu Wang hitting the deck fairly hard. Song, Zhang Wang and Tang, the Chinese quartet. And Ukraine have their first taste of the lead. Elena Podrushna has the pole position at the moment. There are quite a few arguments, Mike, for not leading the way around the relay because the leader seems to have so much more pressure on them. Uh, sometimes an advantage to be in lane one because you can't see so much of the other athletes, but there is no escaping the pressure which comes from being the race leader. I think until you have experienced it a number of times, then becoming the leader changes. When it's the first experience, uh, it's a new and it's a very scary experience and you've got, you set yourself up that there's more to lose than there is to gain and, uh, and that affects the shooting. Well, we've got one more leg, obviously, to go after this one, but they still have the standing shoot. If we still have six teams involved after the second shoot on this third leg, we're in for a cracking finale. If you look at the anchor leg runners for each team, I think, uh, well, the Russians with Olga Vilkina will be fairly confident they can do something. Tora Berger of Norway, if she's on the same sort of form as she was pre-Christmas, should be able to run away with it, in my view. But Vita Samirienko is going to be in a fine position to make up for any mistakes we see. Norway back from this one. Yitka Landova. <laughs> oh. That's uh, really hit the head on the rifle barrel, that hurts. No damage done, though. 
and uh, she's got away without damaging the poles as well. So uh, a little bit fortunate there for Landova. Well, she will have problems there when she comes in to shoot because the sights definitely will have been packed up with this wet snow. At least it's wet, Mike. Uh, it's when it's hard and icy that those sort of falls do uh, enormous amount of damage, not only to the body but to the equipment as well. So time to settle. The second shoot. And Ukraine, who rattled those prone targets down, will be hoping that Elena Pedrushna can do the same. Shamray just uh, looking nervous. I thought the Russian coach... Pavel Rostosev, he looked very confident and very relaxed, waving at the camera. Vita Semelyenko, she looks focused, as does Germany's Nadine Horschler. What a big moment for Nadine Horschler. Uh, and still wondering why Tina Bachmann, who's got far more experience than Horschler, didn't take the ankle leg. And uh, Bachmann shot so well, I know that really prior to Christmas, her, her shooting deserted her occasionally, but well, maybe that's why she went first. First and last are always the most difficult legs to go. Well, the wind can't make its mind up. And uh, <laughs> <laughs> that's got to be a good thing for the athletes. Now, standing position, remember, two kilometres to ski after this. So if Pedrushna can get five out of five and get a lead of some 30, 35 seconds, it really does pile the pressure on the bigger nations behind. Nice start. I think she would have settled for that prior to the shoot. It's good. She's one of the rare athletes who shoots better in the stand than she does in the pro in there, Pedrushna, the Ukrainian. It's good. So one spare round required. Germany are going to need at least one. Norway with Fanny Horn, two out of two so far, slow, deliberate, but throws number three wide. France with uh, a miss, and that could prove crucial. Norway now in a little bit of trouble, so two misses already and three targets remaining to be hit. And the France get, France get four, but Germany have cleared. Six shots required, and that's put uh, Hildebrand in a good position. She should be able to hang on to second. Poland and Norway. Norway certainly on the penalty loop. Poland join them. And that could be their chance gone. Tora Berger's job is going to be an almighty one, Mike. Three penalty loops possible for Norway. Oh, too much movement, but somehow, somehow she clears it. So 300 metres to ski, and Tora Berger has got uh, a major job in hand. Russia with three misses, but five targets going down. They've also lost at least 50 seconds. And uh, great work, really, from Pedrushna of Ukraine. Well, the amount of times that there's been so much change on the range, we still it has it has a long way to go with the, the last leg skiers to go out there. Tora Berger has a lot of work to do if the Norwegians want uh, even to make the podium. <laughs> yep. uh, it's it's high risk stuff when you have to go down to your third spare round, but he doesn't look over uh, depressed about it. Is it going to be Ukraine's day? Don't forget, they finished second in the first and only relay we've had so far this year. That was a massive confidence booster for them. They have three very strong athletes indeed, and they've used them well tonight, putting their weaker skier on the first leg, Yulia Jima. They have hardly put a foot wrong since then, and they've only missed four targets so far tonight. They've got the best record bar Slovakia, but Slovakia haven't matched the leading teams for speed. Slovakia only missing three targets so far tonight. Germany keeping the crowd's hopes alive. They came out of the range some 19.7 seconds down on the race leaders Ukraine and it looks Mike as if uh, Pedrushna is pulling away from Germany's Hildebrand she's definitely uh, creating more space and Hildebrand looking really tired her strength is her shooting Sophie Boye still skiing well nice explosive action of the leg at the end of the uh, the push-off and uh, she's closed within 33 having been uh, 30 seconds behind so lost a little to the leaders but certainly closing on Germany with the 
Doran Abair in the last leg, you've got to feel quite confident that the French are going to move forward like your predictions, Patrick. <laughs> but has the recent last weekend 